sisters in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you. Welcome to this glorious Lord's Day here in this space made holy in the presence of God. It is a delight to gather with all of you, uh, wherever you may be, here in person or here in spirit. Uh, sadly, only one of our cameras seems to be working today, so um, well, I guess that puts you all off the hook. You won't have to sit there and smile the whole time in case your camera comes on. Um, but uh, I'm sad about that, and I'm, I'm sorry for uh, the folks watching. Um, we'll still, we're still here, we're still here, but we can't vary up the angles as much as we would like. Anyway, um, certainly want to welcome all who are visiting with us today. If you are so inclined, you are more than encouraged to uh, fill out that visitor's pad on the end of your pew uh, to help us keep in contact with you uh, and available if you have any questions. Um, we had a great day yesterday talking about meeting people. Um, we had a good day yesterday at the Heart of Virginia Festival. Uh, I think all of us who were working the tent felt like it was a nice, positive experience. We got to meet new people and, and um, even did a few yo-yo tricks. Uh, it was all good. A stage. Always a stage. Always. The world is a stage, Ann Morton. What? <laughs> Um, but no, thank you for everybody that helped with that, who helped set up that tent and, and, and all that. There's a lot of work that went into that. Uh, and that work started, what, years ago, Cherie? We finally got to use it. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Uh, but no, thanks to everybody. And thanks to everybody also for last week. We had a, a nice time. Even though we couldn't make Wilkes Lake uh, there, uh, we had Wil Wilkes Lake here. I don't know, uh, but we did have a nice time, nice time of worship, and the luncheon was delightful, and we had a good old, good old time here as a family and faith. Also, I want to let, remind folks, you probably already know, but the nominating committee, you're meeting today after worship in the parlor, and we have, uh, there have been names that have been coming in, suggestions for new church officers, people to serve on the nominating committee for next time, but uh, if you have any more, this is your last chance. Well, maybe not your last chance. Last chance of worship. Um, if you'd like to um, submit any names for consideration, uh, just slip them to Paula somewhere between now and the meeting. And um, well, maybe not right now. <laughs> During the first hymn, right? No, don't do that. Well, I guess if you really needed to, just give them to Paula after church. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Other announcements that we need to bring up? We good? All right. Well, friends, um, let us rejoice this day in the presence of God as the people of God. Let us rejoice this day in the love of our Lord. Let us rejoice. God is good. Let us give thanks and praise.
Um, as long as we're thinking about our singers, <coughs> I also need to uh, introduce you to a new one. Anastasia is over here. Hi, Anastasia. A Anastasia is a senior at Longwood. What's your last name? Marl. Marl? And uh, she will be with us for the rest of the year, uh, school year. So we'll have her around for a little while, and um, we're glad, delighted to have her. So let's continue. Mm, be blessed. All right. Join with me, if you will, friends, in our call to worship in the bulletin. Let us welcome and embrace the Spirit of God in this space. Join with me. <laughs> Truly, God is good to Israel to those who are pure in heart. For as, as for me, as for me, my feet have had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. Well, for I was envious of the arrogant. I, I saw the prosperity of the wicked. wicked. When my soul was embittered, when I was pricked in heart, I was stupid and ignorant. I was like a brute beast toward you. Yeah. But nevertheless, I am continually with you. Receive me with honor. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire more than you. All the flesh of my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Let us rejoice, friends, in our first hymn, number 620. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Together, let us rise. tradition recognize the importance of confessing our sinfulness before God, because none of us deserves to be in this space, but all are invited 
into this space. Let us recognize our need for God's help in everything that we do. Join with me in our prayer of confession, friends, in the bulletin. As one people in Christ, let us pray. We rejoice in the gift of this day, most holy God. You have given us a world of wonder, lives of connection and relationship, and abilities and talents to share. We live in your abundance, O righteous one. Yet we have failed to express your abundance in heart, in mercy, in what is right, in truth, in our sharing, in adoration, in service, or in freedom. Do not let our weak spirits rule on our commitment to your kingdom. Forgive us for not embracing your abundance in Christ Jesus. Make us more like Jesus this day. Make us want to be more like Jesus in the days to come. Make us more willing to be like Jesus in all that we do. Make us more like Jesus with all that we have. In his precious name we pray. Amen. It is a good thing to be open and honest about our need. And it is even a better thing to know that God meets our needs in abundance. God's grace is for us all, friends. The good news is that God is with us now and forever. Let us embrace this truth, the power of God's promise, with our assurance of pardon in the bulletin. Together, friends. None of our failures are greater than the grace of our Lord and Savior, who died for the love of the world, was raised by the love of the Father, and reigns for us in the Holy Spirit. He is our everything. Amen and hallelujah. to kill them 
in the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth. <clears throat> Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants that they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord, my friends. We turn now to our second scripture lesson in Paul's first letter to his friend Timothy, the young minister. Paul reflects on his life in some of this. First Timothy, the first chapter, beginning at verse 12. Again, follow along in the word of God. I'm grateful. The Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, 
of whom I am foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the kings of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. I thought it was going to be in decent shape today until yesterday as we were taking down or preparing to finish up, wrap up things at the uh, at our church tent at the Heart of Virginia Festival and one of our volunteers who will remain unnamed except his initials are Jerry Stewart <laughs> warned me that today's sermon had better be exciting or else he would most likely fall asleep in worship. <laughs> there is nothing uh, like raising the bar for the preacher, applying that extra pressure. If I fail, he fails to stay awake. If he fails to stay awake, then I fail to be an engaging preacher. Sounds like a lot can go wrong here. You know, I had thought actually to yell out random warnings every 35 seconds just to keep him awake. But maybe. The subject itself today might be interesting enough to stay with us. I, I don't mean to pick on Jerry at all. I mean, we all struggle to be and to do what we set out to accomplish. We all struggle to end up where we plan in life. We all struggle every day of our lives in more things than we care to admit. Big things, little things, we all struggle and we all fail to some degree in just about all of it. As Presbyterians in the Reformed tradition, we believe all flesh is corrupted by sin and therefore incapable of being good enough without God's help. As human beings, it is really, really hard, near impossible, to do anything perfectly as we want. Certainly, we miss the mark completely also. In other words, there's a lot of failing out there. What people call epic fails are not only found in YouTube video collaborations, but they have been happening through history since the beginning of time. One of the more interesting uh, epic failures of the 21st century happened in the early 1930s. And I'm not even talking about the Great Depression. But while that was going on, there was another catastrophe happening in Australia. The Great Emu War. Yes, I said emu, that large flightless bird akin to the ostrich but slightly smaller. They went to war with the Australian military. Imagine a plague of locusts, but these are feathery, aggressive, six foot tall, and can run over 30 miles an hour. They can plow through fences and destroy harvests, especially wheat harvests, which was the problem then. As many as 20,000 emus were rampaging wild in that day and terrorizing farms in Western Australia. The government's best answer was to send veterans of World War I with machine guns out there in an attempt to squash this invasive emu problem um, and save the wheat harvest, of course. Turns out that emus are remarkably hard to fight in this way, and maybe 10% were handled 
uh, at the end of a number of botched operations, some of the harvest was saved, you know, for a while, but the birds came back with a vengeance over the next decades. It turned out to be a pretty big waste of time and money and an embarrassment. Uh, the term emu war is not one for a grand success in life. And if you're still not sure, comedians John Cleese of Monty Python fame and Rob Schneider were working on a movie about this to be released this year. And let's just say they don't make serious movies. But something much more tragic and very much more disastrous was the scene in Exodus 32. You know, you would think that the Hebrew people, having escaped Egypt, the ten plagues, the crossing of the Sea of Reeds, which many of us call the Red Sea, and the destruction of the Egyptian army, chasing them, pillars of smoke and fire, and standing at the base of a mountain as it's blasting with fury and smoke and fire, all of that, after all of that, they would have some inkling that God was real and serious. Literally, they had just left Egypt, and they turned to idols. You would think that they might appreciate who God is and what God had done for them, but it's exactly the opposite. They have completely forgotten God, who just worked wonders for them and adopted idols to worship while they sit there and wait for something to happen. God is furious, furious, beyond furious. This is a monstrous slap in the face after what God had done for them. It's the biggest failure that they will know in their lifetime. And yet, it's one in a long line of failures. The people of God get it wrong again and again. They never get it right. Which is the whole reason why Jesus joins us as God's solution to the epic failure that's humanity. Now, don't, please, don't call me Donald Downer. I'm giving Debbie a break. Our lives are so incredibly marred by sin as we fail in relationship to God, let alone the disappointments and weaknesses and insecurities, the limitations, the frailty, the ignorance and fear. It's no wonder that we struggle to be the people that we wish we were. Of course, Hollywood wants us to believe it's possible. Marketing and advertising wants us to believe it's possible. Anyone selling anything wants you to believe that the perfect, the, the best, the right is possible for the right price if you do the right things. You can be a winner if you keep playing the lottery, literally and figuratively. You can find the right partner if you try out enough people. You can find the right job if you keep hopping from employer to employer. You can maybe even find the right beliefs or the right God if you don't commit to anyone in particular. But all of that leads to failure. Broken hearts, broken dreams, broken spirits, broken lives. There's no way we will ever make ourselves the people we wish we could be. We cannot win by ourselves. And that's okay. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish we could hear the emotion in Paul's voice as he composed these words to his dear friend Timothy. These were words and thoughts that Paul kept in his heart and returned to these ideas often. He knew how much he had done against Jesus, against his followers. 
in his former life. He knew how far he was from the heart of Christ in his life and beliefs. He knew how out of touch he was from God's grace. So he knew how much of failure he had been. He was the last person Jesus should have called on for that special, precious, vital task of taking the gospel to the Gentiles. And yet, there he was, with his heart full of song in this passage. As you can tell from the last line that I read, it's a doxology, a benediction of praise. To wrap up his appreciation and gratitude for God's grace in Christ, his soul was rejoicing as he wrote this passage. His soul was rejoicing in his failure. I don't know about you, but I literally don't deserve anything good that has happened in my life. I have not earned any of the blessings that I have received. It's interesting to me that generally we don't talk much about the real struggles that we've endured or are enduring. Sometimes we dance around them and drop hints with each other. As a pastor, I might know a little more than some people about the skeletons we carry, but I carry them too. It makes me sad that we cannot be more honest with each other in this regard. If we could bear our hearts a little more openly, we would see that we are not as different from each other as we might think. It's so tempting to walk into a room and, and see everyone else around you, and, and, they, and they are way more successful and popular and together and intelligent and beautiful and accomplished or whatever. But that's all in our heads. They're drowning in debt and with fighting families and failing marriages and health problems and self-image issues and depressing jobs and weak faith, just like us. We carry our brokenness so carefully that others might not know. But that also means we carry it alone. Paul makes no bones about it. And he makes it abundantly clear to all who will listen what a failure he was and what service God and Christ has gotten him into. Maybe we, maybe, maybe we don't believe God is doing anything good with us and the ways we have flopped in this world. Really? You really don't think God is turning your life around in a mighty way? If God can use Paul, we actually might look pretty good in comparison. It is not if, but when we fail. Where is God in that? That is the real question. And where this conversation must come around, it's a matter of time before we fail. Jerry might already be asleep. It's inevitable that we miss the mark. Before you even get home, you will have failed seven times. That's not the point, however, and that does not define you. When we are failures, when we admit that we are failures, when we own that we are failures, then we become far more interesting to God. When we are honest with each other and ourselves, then things can happen in God's grace that could never happen before. We need safe spaces for those conversations. But that's exactly where God works the wonders and miracles. By cultivating those relationships in which we can be brutally honest about our own shortcomings and limitations and brokenness, we will find room to heal and grow and serve that we have never known. 
Paul would never have given us the gospel if he had shied away from the truth of his failure. We are so messed up. But God is so wonderful. We are so wayward. But Christ is so solid. We are so hurting. But the Spirit is full of healing. There's nothing we can do to break God's love. There's nowhere we can go from God's grace. There's no failure we can commit that makes us worth anything less in the Spirit of our Lord. Your homework for this week, friends, is to think about those times when you have confronted your own brokenness and failures. Did you have the courage and humility to share? Do you have safe places to be authentically God's chosen, hurting children? How have you found the grace of Jesus? I wish I didn't need God, but life is so much richer in relationship with the divine presence that can comfort, rejoice, mend, bless, and hold the failure of a life that I am. Maybe that's your story too. I hope so. To God be the glory, friends. Amen. We turn now to our time of confessing our faith, of remembering and cherishing the essence of the gospel, of clinging to the words of the faith that's been passed down to us through the ages. While these words are very, very familiar to us, do not take them for granted, but remember what it is that God has done for you and how we live in Christ now. Let us rise and confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed found on page 35 of the hymnal. Friends, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried, and he descended into hell, third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn, friends, is Amazing Grace, 649. <laughs> Thank you.
Let's turn now to our time of prayer, of shared prayer, a time of reflecting and resting in the Spirit of our God. As we do commit ourselves to this sacred task, I, I do welcome and invite your prayers for all of God's children, uh, those we've been carrying in our hearts through these days, those whom we regularly admit, or, uh, confess and, and hold and lift in our, in our prayers. Uh, and especially, I uh, ask your prayers for the family of Chili Cult of Chipotle. Did I say that? Apple like Chipotle. Chipotle. Chilcote? Oh, no, don't say the E. <laughs> Um, Chile uh, was a church member here, you know, I, I, I never actually got to meet her, but I've spoken to her, um, but she passed away last week, and um, her funeral was Friday, but um, hold her family in your prayers as they share that time of loss, she's in her 50s, so certainly on the younger side of things. So just keep her in your prayers. Uh, others we need to lift up in particular today? The um, family oh, of... The Whitey family. Um, yes. Uh, I don't... Does, does Rodney have connections over here? You know? A little bit. Uh, I don't know if you know a fellow by the name of Rodney Whitey. Another Whitey is around. But um, he... His daughter actually died Friday, Thursday, or Thursday night, in a car accident. Uh, she was Rachel's age, so what, 16? Um, not, a, not a student. Uh, and her mother was a teacher in Nauta also. Um, anyway, very difficult time for that family, as you can imagine. Um, just tremendous, tremendous pain and loss there. Um, the single vehicle accident. But anyway, hold them, if you will, in your hearts and prayers. Uh, we covet that. Thank you. And others? Well, friends, let us go to our God with confidence, with the assurance that God hears our prayers in all that we do. Holy, almighty, and gracious God, we are more than grateful for this very opportunity and the breath of this moment to be held in the blessing of your spirit. We ask, we petition you to fill this space, our minds, our hearts with your love. Remember us as we lift our prayers to you. Remember our joys and our celebrations. Remember our praise and the ways we cherish your fullness. Remember our hurts, our concerns, our brokenness, and our fears. Remember those things that we grieve and tremble to name. Remember how we worry through the night, how we feel small, frustrated, and helpless in this changing world. Remember the guilt we carry for our failures, whether we are responsible or not. Give us the tenderness of your grace in this time. Hear us upon the lips of Jesus. O oh God, in our comings and goings, watch over your children. So many things are happening in our lives, O oh God. We're all struggling with so much. You may feel overwhelmed. We may feel reluctant to be, to do, to trust, to go out and follow your, your love into the world. We're dealing with health issues, some of which we aren't even knowledgeable of yet, but we ask that you help your children in this day, not only here in Farmville, but across this world. Where your children call out to you and turn to you and petition you with genuine prayers, with those cries and pleas for help.
Oh God, remember us in our times together and our times apart. It is good when we gather together in your name and we can know that you are present with us. And it can be difficult as we are separated either by choice or by circumstance or we're divided by history and lines that have been drawn for many ages. Wherever your children are not able to come together. Oh God, we bless, we ask that you bless and hold our connections before us and remember the ways that we can grow more together and find your peace, your grace among us. Oh God, remember us in our eating, our talking, and our sharing, in the simple things of life, but the necessary things of life. Hallow our lives in your spirit that we may hold between us in these small day-to-day -day occupations the, the blessings of your love working out in beautiful and simple but profound ways. Show us your goodness when we gather for these important times. Remember us, cherish us, hold us in your heart. Oh God, in our busyness and our business, remember us. We consume, we are consumed, and we, we sometimes consume ourselves with our work and trying to stay busy and productive and active in the world while neglecting the things that matter. But do not pull or let our hearts be pulled in those directions where we are distracted or in the pursuit of greed or gain, we somehow miss what's right before us and the opportunity to serve. But remember us, O oh God, as we offer to you the productivity of our hands and our lives. And God, also remember us in our families, our relationships, and our communities. We need that help so much as community as family can be so difficult in these days. We are a people of division, which is not a reflection of your kingdom, but a reflection of our selfish ambitions and needs and wants. There's a better life that you seek for us, O God. So hold these bonds before your face. Hold them before you in a way that we can recognize in one another the beauty and the grace of all of your children. Oh God, remember us also in our times of making decisions. We ask for your help with the government and all the governments of the world as they serve the people. Help them to find in their hearts the desire to serve the people to hold all of your people in their hearts as they make decisions. But we ask for that help for all, those, all of those who are responsible for the care of others, whose lives are dependent on well-being and grace and compassion and wisdom. Grow your people in this way, O oh God, as you remember them. Yes, in this time of worship, Help us to remember you and bring our remembrances together as a living offering, as the mortar for this spiritual house. Help us to trust on you, to lean on you, to call on you, to rely on you, and to stand on the foundation, the life, the hope, and the salvation that you've given us in Christ Jesus, our risen Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, friends. Thank you for helping me pray. Our Attention now goes to the time of offering. If you have already presented.
presented your offering to God, whatever that may be, bless you. If you are still thinking about it, maybe, maybe there are plates at every in, or every exit entrance. Same thing. Um, the plates there, the, the silver plates. You're welcome to leave something if you wish. Um, for whatever your offering may be, uh, let us offer ourselves to God as living offerings with our prayer in the bulletin. With one voice, friends, let us pray. Mighty and merciful God, your richness is for us all. Make these gifts an expression of that value to our neighbor, to our community, and to the world. May all our sisters and brothers know your love with our help in Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing. Join with me. Son, God the Son, 
and God the Spirit together. Amen and hallelujah. Thank mm -hmm. you.